Hi, I'm Simon Isaacs, and this is our Anything in Print podcast. Our, our customers are more demanding of what they need from us, and it's become apparent that tracking and tracing throughout the whole of the journey from data coming into the factory right through to that pack landing with the customer is really important. What's important for customers is also important to us. People say yeah. partnership a lot, um, and, and really they mean that we just want to be able to beat you up for price at, at the right point. Um, <laughs> but it's actually that that, that co-beneficial um, relationship that we have, and that's that's the same way that we we want to work with our customers and you know the digital landscape has just changed so much you know communities is is on a transformation journey and and we are transforming at the same time the market is transforming again you know digital and that view that it's a print or it's a it's a text message or it's an email that that is now irrelevant it is all about using that data to give the insight to do the right thing by customers and to help us be more efficient and and, and achieve what we know we can with Productivity doesn't really mean expecting people to work harder, it means work smarter. Okay, welcome to the Rico Anything in Print podcast. Um, this is season two and we're focusing on the champions of print. And the aim is to highlight people within the industry who are bold, innovative and who actually embrace a mindset to succeed in this changing print industry. Um, I do have the pleasure of working with some great companies and their leadership teams, and I'm always inspired by the way these people lead their business and have the confidence to be optimistic. Uh, and they always look to work with their industry um, suppliers to try and get the most value from them and to constantly look at ways of innovating. Um, with this in mind, I'd like to welcome two ladies who are exactly that profile. Um, they're both very inspiring and inno innovative thinkers, and um, they've been well on the transformation journey with Communisys. So I have Cara Walker, who is Executive Director of the Digital Solutions, and Christina McMim, who is Executive Director of Manufacturing and Logistics. Ladies, I'm very, very pleased to have you here with me. <laughs> it's nice Lovely to spend to some here. time with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I did think of communities when we started working on this um, podcast and tried to think of companies that I thought were up there with, you know, innovative, um, inspirational thinkers. And I actually thought of the both of you for this particular one, because what I love is how closely you work together mm -hmm. in terms of one focus being in manufacturing and operations and the other one sort of being in the um, technical if you like infrastructure and architecture of the business and actually it's a really good collaboration so do you want to have a quick start with um what you both do and how you both work together yeah. shall, shall i go first you go um, so i i look after our uk operations which basically means that i look after five main sites um we have the capability of producing four billion a4 pages 1.5 billion packs per annum so you know uh, quite a quite a big um capacity there and i've been doing this for seven years now so that probably means that i've known both of you for seven years because yeah, absolutely <laughs> and i think i think that's one of the things that really helps is that we've had quite a lot of stability with some of the relationships so cara and i have worked together haven't we on lots of different projects over those years lots of different things and I think what comes from that is the trust that you have from working with with great colleagues um, and really understanding how we both tick. <laughs> Absolutely. And you definitely both do that. <laughs> uh, so really, really pleased to be part of this conversation. Thank you for inviting us. So I'm Cara. I look after our digital solutions, which is everything from the platforms and services that we provide to our clients to everything that runs our internal business. Um, so essentially when Christina wakes up and has decided she's got a great idea, it becomes my headache. Um, and that happens all too often, all too often. Um, but as, as Christina said, we've worked together. I've been at Communities for eight years now. Christina joined shortly after me. We've both in varying roles in that time, but always in a, in a sort of co-beneficial, co-supportive way. Um, you know, manufacturing and technology have to go hand in hand where where we're successful and um, both of us are, are successful both functions are successful and obviously we've worked with you for all that time as well lucky you yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely and I'm pretty sure you know how I tick as well to be honest <laughs> with you. <clears throat> but I think one of the things that I love about working with you both is you always have a very 
open and honest approach um, with me personally and also your suppliers. Um, and it's very apparent to me that you have a constant look at your journey, your transformation. You know, it's uh, the world is changing fast. You know, one minute it's uh, we're in a pandemic, next minute there's massive cost increases everywhere. And it, you, you always seem to have a, a new strategy, a new project that you're working on, or a lot of new projects uh, that you're working on. Um, so what is crucial for communities moving forward in terms of that transformation journey now? I think one of the main things which has changed is is the print runs and I think everybody who's in the industry will recognise that and so it's just not enough now to um, get the most modern up-to-date equipment which obviously we have um, we've got to do things differently and you know we've fo we've done a lot of focus in the operation which you've been involved with with us uh, Sam where we've, we've looked at how can we do things differently how do we get things to machines in a more organized fashion but I think more and more um, our, our customers are more demanding of what they need from us and it's become apparent that tracking and tracing throughout the whole of the journey from data coming into the factory right through to that pack landing with the customer is really important. What's important for customers is also important to us in the operation. Um, and we can't just do this operationally. This is where technology and the support um, comes in from a myriad of suppliers that, that we have working with us right across that whole process. Yeah, I agree. And it, it is true partnership. People say yeah. partnership a lot. Um, and, and really, they mean that we just want to be able to beat you up for price at, at the right point. Um, but it's actually that that, that co-beneficial um, relationship that we have. And that's that's the same way that we we want to work with our customers. And yeah, the digital landscape has just changed so much. You know, Communitas is is on a transformation journey, and and we are transforming at the same time. The market is transforming. It's gone from digital just being, you know, it happens to be an email versus a you know a piece of paper that will land on your door to to both channels actually needing to interact with each other and and, and point in the same direction and talk with the same tone of voice and people want the flexibility of a digital message in a in a physical output and you know unless the two are going hand in hand you know we we're here to help our customers achieve what they need to therefore our services need to go hand in hand in the same way and it moves far more into that data value stream as well you know a lot of our conversations with our customers are around doing the right things by their customers um, and again, you know, digital and that view that it's a print or it's a it's a text message or it's an email that that is now irrelevant. It is all about using that data to give the insight to do the right thing by customers and to help us be more efficient and and, and achieve what we know we can with those assets that that Christina mentioned. Oh, absolutely, I remember we used to um, always talk about communities and you, almost your sites were transaction and direct mail as sort of separate entities almost. Um, but we've spoken a lot about this just recently. Mm -hmm. I think there's a real blurred line between yeah, what these two yeah. things are, isn't there, now? Yeah, and I think, yeah. you know, there's different, the clients still need the same thing, no matter which one it is. Yeah, we've we've definitely seen a blurring between um, what would be traditionally transactional and what's what's classified as marketing, um, and we're able to produce those same products across our our different factories as well, which helping you know to have a look at our factories at an enterprise level is really helping us with reliability, being able to better access all of the capacity that we've got across all of the assets, and we've certainly had a shift where. We've focused on a, a huge amount of standardization across the sites as well, so that that, that enables um, those journeys to come together. And I think that helps you as well, doesn't it, Cara? With your OCD helps me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's been to one of my factories, they'll understand that. With kids that have to have things in the right line. <laughs> you can always tell one of my factories. <laughs> And you've got a background as well in sort of that methodology, Christina, which I, I've always took a lot of inspiration yeah. from. You know, you've you've mentored me a lot as well with this. And, um, you know, and I'm not saying I think everybody needs to be Lean Six Sigma trained, but that constant evaluation of what you do every day is really important to you. And you're now having to yeah. think about your teams and how they, they do that and cultural change with those people. I think um, putting quality first is really central 
to that philosophy and that's what I really like and if you if you're doing the right thing for customers and doing things right first time guess what it's also efficient and it's also um you know a good value for money as well um and we're constantly evaluating so um we get lots of inspiration from our operators because they're the ones who see things which are happening on a day by day basis and usually they're saying well this is ridiculous why are we doing it like this and what we're trying to do is give them an outlet for that so that they don't just moan about it they've they've got the ability to get on some training courses you know we, we do a huge amount with our apprenticeship levy we really believe in training our operators to a really really high standard um, and giving them the opportunity to contribute their ideas and it's great when they see those come into life so you know some of the work that we've done on on the short runs we did that um, with one of our suppliers um, their engineers came in and were part of the team um, and we've had some fantastic results from from that piece of work and all of those ideas just came from from our staff. Mm. And do you get any sort of I guess any um, confidence issues with that because one of the things I hear normally when you try and um, start to improve something or, or make something faster more efficient is people start to worry that that's their job's in trouble I guess and so do you have that sort of um, argument if you like and how do you sort of tackle that? I think we just um, well, we focus on being really honest and mm. The reality has been as we've become more productive, we've been able to offer greater value to our, our end customers, which means that we've been win winning more work. You know, it's a very, very competitive environment. And I think they buy into that success. And, you know, we started off with our Lean Six Sigma journey in Liverpool, seeing a huge amount of um, investment in that site as a consequence of the improvement ideas which, which have come out of some of the workshops there. Um, and we've just translated that across the other sites as well. So I think, you know, people see the benefit um, day to day and productivity doesn't really mean expecting people to work harder it means work smarter so i think they see the benefit yeah sure would you I agree Cara? That, no that honesty yeah. point completely because i mean i remember you you both know i used to uh, i used to run one of our one of our operational sites and i remember having com which again is probably why we go hand in hand so well so i know the headaches that i can cause um I remember having conversations around, you know, volume decline and customer behaviour and and the view very much was, well, can't we stop it? And, you, you know, we're not going to stop yeah. it. But yeah. it was if you go back to the way this industry was trying to deal with that, you know, five, six, seven years ago, there was there was this almost arrogance that it wouldn't go that way and you know paper paper will always be here we will still be printing documents and, and people value that communication stream but that honesty that says actually it's a blend and that's what's going to make people successful and and translating that down into opportunity for people I mean we've had some really good success stories within our organization of people who have moved around many many different roles and and they find I mean including our, ourselves and I think that's far more fulfilling for them than yeah. than you know wanting to to protect something that, that really is out of our control and you know transforming your business at the same time as the market's transforming and and just being really open and honest and and purpose-led in your communications to to the teams um it's it's all really you could do as a responsible business yeah no absolutely and and I think you know, I don't see that you've actually made that many headcount reductions either as a result. You know, you've been reallocating that work to work on projects that you then you reutilise the people better and get their skills improved. And then it makes for a, a much more engaged workforce, which is what you see when you when you walk around your sites generally is people are very actively involved and wanting to change. Um, I mean, obviously, everybody's talking at the moment about rising costs. I mean, paper mm. and energy are huge um is that a real concern for communities or you know are you having to tackle that now is it, is it the biggest priority for you or or is it something that you you know you were always expecting i don't know but it's it's definitely up there for all of us isn't mm -hmm. it i think you know we we try and again being incredibly transparent with our with our staff and our customers about the impact of that and um, you know paper price paper shortages it's it's been probably the most turbulent year we've had in a long time and Christina looks after our procurement teams as well so she's had an yeah. absolute <laughs> absolute pain of the year yeah <laughs> I, 
And I, I, well, there's the transparency, you know, because you know some of the costs are unprecedented, but we always through continuous improvement are also looking at waste. Um, so we, we've got a number of different activities where we're really challenging what's become custom and practice. You know, why why do we do as many calibrations? Might only seem like a small thing, but when you're calibrating constantly across all of your your machines, very quickly you can get a lot of paper waste. So we we really challenge that. Um, we look at you know the way that we test work as it comes in to make sure that we're getting things through the factory right first time to reduce any waste which would be associated you know with with poor quality runs um and, and we look at all of the usual things like lighting energy efficiency um if, if there's any way of recycling any of the energy back into our factories as well and you know one of the ironies is as energy becomes more expensive the cost benefit of doing some of those schemes becomes you know potentially something that we can have a look at whereas previously there wouldn't it would have taken a long time to get that that payback. Sure, the client's been quite good about this as well. I mean, I'm never sure how how you approach that because obviously a lot of contracts are are written for a certain term. I'm, I'm guessing you still got to try and that approach without going into obviously any any secretive details. But for the understanding of it, yeah, yeah, yeah good, definitely, good. definitely, and and we we've had conversations with partners conversations with clients and and also talking to our staff about how it's impacting them um, yeah. we do quite frequent um road shows we call them but it's it's us uh, making sure that we go out and and visit all of the sites and and really talk very openly about the business and where it's going and one of the things we spoke about last time I mean this was a few months ago was how how you know our staff and our our colleagues are dealing with this and trying to understand what we can do to help them and um, so I think it was a night shift in Liverpool we spoke actually at length about if you improve the bike sheds we can we can actually do more we can cycle to work more we can reduce costs we can we can do more um, and it's it's just listening to those things and acting on them that helps our employees, which means that they feel that, that they're getting the level of support that they need to tackle what is just a, a really challenging time for everybody. Oh, excellent. Now, honestly, I think, you know, um, everything that you do is really sort of evolving around what your customers are asking for and, and your market needs as well. Um, one of the things that always makes me laugh, actually, I remember it well now because it was one of your team. I perhaps shouldn't mention a name on, the, on there. <laughs> Um, but I remember him saying to me that there was no way on earth he was going to opt out of paper billing because it was protecting his his industry. <laughs> and I was very much like that as well for a while, going, no, I want paper statements, even if they turn up and I put them in the bin. Um, you know, there was that whole I'm in that industry. But I think, you know, you've always had that mindset of now of, of print is going hand in hand with the digital communication. So as you've just said, so. You know, we, we have to think differently. And I, I know communities are now looking at the sort of bigger picture in terms of communications in general. Uh, what, what, are, what are your clients talking to you about now? How easy is that to get them to come to you for everything, I guess? <laughs> I, think, I think it's given the flexibility because obviously we want them to come to us for absolutely everything. But we also yeah. recognise that depending on where the client is in their journey, they they might only need us for, for one part. And our transformation and and the the platform that we're developing now gives that opportunity so consume as much or as little as you want and people want to be able to achieve you know what will be a business case aim everyone has a has a number associated to digital transformation and, and you know our clients are very open with us about that and we appreciate that they want to know they're working with a sustainable business that recognizes that that isn't going to do the old you know we're going to try and protect paper at all costs you know they might not need us to help them with that digitalization in all in all areas but we need to be able to deal with that that change over time and, and they need us to demonstrate how we do that. But really they need to, or they're, they're looking to consume digital aspects in far more of a, a software as a service, not big, hefty product implementations, unfortunately. It is very <laughs> much around being able to flexibly model and, um, and use what they need when they need it. And I think that changes by sector. Um, we see variations in, in, you know, from banking to more retail. Um, you know, we see some very, very different variations in, in what the way they're approaching it, and also the the size of the company. And, and what we're doing is making sure that, as I said 
say whether you want one service or 10 services, that flexibility of being able to plug and play and, and get yourself up and running very, very quickly, um, we, we can provide. Excellent. You mentioned the size and scale, actually. I think one of the things we haven't done in this call is perhaps just mention the size and scale of, of your business. You know, I think most people know that you're one of the big players in the market space, but just give a brief summary perhaps of, of, of you know, what how many packs do you produce? What, what sort of scale? How many sites have you got? Maybe, I don't know. It might just help people understand um, why you are the champions of print. <laughs> We've got three main sites, uh, that's Liverpool, that's Copley and Leeds. Um, we've got a smaller site up in Edinburgh, we call Telferton, and we've got um, sort of a, a, a picking and packing and logistics operation up in Cromlington, just outside of Newcastle. And then we've got, so that, that that's our outbound capability, but we've also got inbound capability as well. We've got offices throughout the UK um, that, that support there as well. Um, and output wise, 1.5 um, billion packs per annum is kind of the capacity that, that we've got and the ability to be able to print 4 billion A4s um, annually as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a really huge um, operation and we're site interoperable through the three main factories, which means that for the vast majority of digital printing and enclosing, we're able to move the work across all three sites, which gives, um, you know, it's, it's active uh, business continuity. We're, we're constantly testing all of our systems and processes. So, yeah, we're, we're really proud of our factories. You know, you just took the question out of my mouth now. I was going to ask you about site interoperability. Um, so, I mean, obviously, we've been speaking to that. As long as I've known you, we've been speaking about site interoperability. And, and Cara, I know um, in your role now, in your, you know, you're having to think about actually what that means. I know communities obviously can do that easily. But there's always been a big focus on actually moving the production around, if you like. But the big focus now, I guess, is really in your area around the architecture, the infrastructure. And there's a real big push on that now to make that as efficient as the production side itself. Um, so I don't know if you want to have a quick talk through, you know, how big that that size of that project is for you and, you know, the scale, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's huge. We're, we're on an 18 month transformation programme, which is rationalizing the the way that we work across our functions full stop to give us that that increased flexibility so that's everything from uh, rolling out a new erp across our business to help our planning and and business management we are putting in we're taking advantage of cloud uh, technology where possible so we're just going through a process of application rationalization so where we've got multiple things doing the same thing making sure we rationalize those things down and and really ensuring that we go into the business and understand the business drivers for this transformation and one thing that anyone who's spoken to me for the past two years <laughs> will be bored of hearing me saying is this is business transformation supported by technology Technology. And it's very, very easy to see it as a technology yeah. project and it's not. So Christina leads what she needs and I'm there to support that from a technical perspective. But what's really going to turn the dial for our business um, is, is steered by the appropriate um, executive team member to, to help us really understand where we can make impact. But it's everything from understanding that you can you can move your stock around easily, that you can, you, you know, Christina talked about track and trace being able to and you know Rico Process Direct is part of this um, and yeah. so as you know we're rolling Rico Process Director out as our workflow of choice and one thing that gives us is far more reporting uh, at item level so where we are making these decisions and doing this centralised view of planning um, and knowing confidently that we can print a job here one day and there the next it all comes down to having the data at the right point to make those decisions and also being able to replay back to our customers in the form of you know mi that adds value and not just sort of volumetric data so it, it all goes hand in hand and it's it's about flexibility resilience um, and being able to deal with you know very very peaky volumes at times and then you know the the, the quieter day a month that we might get at one day i think doesn't happen after <laughs> <laughs> I just help all of our enterprise planning as well, because at the moment we have got 
a number of systems. Um, so that means that there's quite a lot of manipulation of the data in order for us to be efficient and, and effective in the way that we are. So this will help everybody who's in planning. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot which will simplify, I think, in, in our back office. So it'll replace some of the systems that we're currently working on. It's a massive project. Um, as Cara said, I'm I'm the business sponsor for my sins, <laughs> and I'm and I'm really challenging. You know that we want to make sure that we set this up um, the way that it's needed for the future, and don't necessarily replicate what we're doing today. And we want to have one best way of working, which um, can be quite challenging because people have got used to working in a certain way in different factories. Mm, that's Absolutely. such a challenge. The, yeah. the we've always done it this way. Um, yeah. We've built complexity where there didn't need to be complexity. And Chris, Christina and I drive to simplicity. Now you, you know, you'll end up somewhere in the middle, um, but you start a conversation about it, and it's like, well, actually, I still need these thirty. <laughs> yeah. <things>. You don't. <laughs> no, there's always, there's always ten reasons why you shouldn't before there's a reason why you should. I know. Yeah. It's that whole just just turn it off and see what happens. <laughs> if that happens, I'll, I'll don't do that. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm not quite that brave. Oh gosh. Well, I mean, look, I mean, it is huge. Uh, it, it, I only said 18 months, but thinking about it myself now as you were talking, I mean, not only is site interoperability moving the work around, but like you say, the stock management of it all, reporting, how to track every piece if you start moving work, if you split files around factories, um, you know, security of it, um, regulations, everything that comes into it, I guess it's it's huge. And you mentioned you're trying to build that architecture that will keep you for the future but it's that's a difficult one I mean what is going to happen tomorrow really it is it, and it's all about <laughs> not having those answers so yeah. 18 months in project delivery we've been thinking about this for 18 months to two years prior and I, I joke with my team about you know the things <laughs> taking long um but but the thinking is is so important to make sure that those baselines that you refer to so security absolutely at the heart of what we do quality at the heart of what we do scalability resilience all of those things take significant thinking before you can start to enact and as you know we're, we're partnering in our delivery here so we've just partnered with tech mahindra to help us um in in this delivery of this project but we couldn't have done that unless we had spent you know 18 months to two years beforehand really designing that architecture of how we were going to do it and when you're doing something like this obviously you can look at the needs as of today but the whole point is that it's flexible so if we look at our data for example we're implementing a modern data platform and we're focusing right now in in the project on on sustainability reporting now we know that that's going to change you know what 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 metrics we need what's important what people want us to track um women-led businesses is the is one of the ones that we're just looking at now and and how we can accurately report against that but we know that in six months time that will be different but the important part is to have a data platform that allows you to do it what you therefore need to consume from it can can change and having that flexibility in the platform allows you to future proof you know you've got a platform yeah. that, that can constantly yeah. evolve I mean, that that project alone with with looking at all that orchestration layers and, and workflow and tracking and, and I know you just quickly mentioned Rico Process Director which isn't which is only a part of the whole project obviously um I, I want to go out to a lot of businesses you know looking at the infrastructure is a really difficult one actually um it's a concern to try and change something what happens if it breaks something over here or what happens if we lose this capability or you know it's very difficult or the skills of all those people have left who were part of the original implementation, if you like. So the, the workings of it is quite complex when lots of systems integrate. Um, and obviously we've had this big pandemic, all these cost rises. So there's a huge investment as well to go through. And um, was that challenging then to sort of create a business case for that and to try and think whether this is the right time to do it and whether the cost is appropriate? Yeah, it definitely is. And you know, gone are the days of a business case being, you know, three year return on investment because this printer is, uh, you know, slightly more efficient than that printer. Yeah. We've we've restructured our entire business over the over the pandemic. And, you know, it was a really, really tough time for everybody. 
But actually, it helped us take a real brave, honest look at what we needed to do to, to get ourselves ready for success. So, yes, this project is part of um, of the, the transformation that the business is going in. But the way that we work has changed at the same time. So that that whole looking at it as the business transformation, you know, the, the way that our digital solutions are developed and designed now has completely changed. So as part of this partnership, we're moving away from in-house developed systems that give you the the challenges Sam that you referenced to being a system integrator and, and taking advantage of softwares that are available to us such as RPD uh, we work closely with Quadiant we're doing a lot of work with Bluecrest as to how we can really take data and really add value to it and and it's having that honesty around what that will then do for the the size and shape of your business that's what makes a business case not you know obviously there needs to be a, a financial value to it as well but only focusing on one and, and not having the, the the brave step forward to transform the business at the same time I think was key do you agree Christina yeah and it's not just been having a look at the here and now where we are now it has been about looking at the future and the capability and there are markets that that we can see that you know we need um the flexibility of this platform in order for us to to go and work with with new clients so um you know the complexity that we've got in the business we really we spend a lot of time beforehand really understanding our heritage how we've got to where we are um and what we need from from the platforms and the flexibility and we looked at you know who did we want to partner with in order for us to get the best outcome for this whole transformation oh, absolutely I was going to ask you, it's probably a very difficult question, but what advice could we give anybody else who's thinking about doing something similar? You mentioned a couple of things around being brave. <laughs> That's I know, right. that exactly what I was going to say. You brave. want to be brave. You <laughs> be know. brave. But um, to be really brave because yeah, people and, think and, you are mad <laughs> when, yeah. you, when you say you're going to do this <laughs> for the first time. Um, I, I think it, it's just have the conviction well, have the right team. You know, we we are lucky. You mixed in Cara and I were talking here, but you know, there's a wider team as well. We we hold our hands on on this. This is the way forward. Um, but yeah, be very brave. <laughs> I do. I like that. I like that. But I guess it's also to your point as well. Is is think of the long term big picture as well. Where do you want to be? I guess, because that's what you, you you just talked about there, which is trying to build something that you need for the future, not what you need for tomorrow necessarily. So that's probably a really good one as well. We have very good insights from our long standing clients. We've got some really you know good contracts and we work in strategic partnership with with our clients. So we, we spend a lot of time trying to understand what their current problems are, what their future problems are. And I think that's really helped us as well. So I'd advise people, you know, strategic partnership isn't just about the, the supply chain that you're working with. It is really trying to get to working in partnership with your clients as well to help them with that transformation. I think there's there's a big part of you know we're really proud of our heritage we're really proud of our factories we're really proud of who we are and you you shouldn't see that trying to do this transformation is in any way walking away from that because you can't you cannot beat the magic and, and our, our clients and partners love it of just walking around that shop floor talking to people and um, seeing how much people really engage with the process and and you know the amount of people that will say you know i've never looked at a letter in that way now i know what all those barcodes mean now i know what what what's going on um and you know compare that to an architectural diagram which is just some blocks that show you how to do something they say you're never going to get that buzz and, and having been proud of that heritage and growing that heritage mm. to to mean that we just add more and more versus there being a view that actually one one is contradictory of the other because we're just making it more efficient we're just making print better um yeah. by being able to offer digital journeys at the same time and, and join those two two conversations together 
Have you told your clients about this big change and what you're doing? Uh, how are they seeing it? No, this will be the first time they hear it, Sam. I mean, this is going to be a really surprise. <laughs> you imagine. You know what? <laughs> what about my testing? What about my colours? <laughs> we do. I mean, I've, I've spoke, talking to one of our insurance clients earlier. I'm with yeah. another one tomorrow for a strategy day. We're, we're out there talking a lot. The, the measure for me, I said this to, to, um, to one of our, our long-standing clients earlier, is is making getting to the point where people are talking about the service and not the technology because because it, it's hard not to talk about the technology because that's the change whereas what we want is to talk about the service that, that this provides um and so yes we are talking to our clients very very openly about where we're going to go and at what point we're going to need support from them and change and obviously this is this is quite a, a transformation in the way that we're working with them but at the same time, really understanding where they see things going. So tomorrow is an innovation session with one of our customers because they want to know where our roadmap is. So they know what business problems we're going to answer for them. Um, so unanimously, we've had a, a huge amount of support and excitement from them. Um, and then, you know, as as with the internal business, there's that impatience of so when, when can we have it? <laughs> um, yeah. oh, it's interesting you say that, actually, because one of the things that you know as a supplier when we, when we do sell technologies you, you quite often feature on focus on the actual features of the solution itself you know in, in print it's um you know around the quality and speed i guess throughput um and it's a really an interesting one is actually now trying to speak to actually some of the um, sales people in your businesses who actually need to understand well, what actually are the benefits to it so I don't really need to know about how fast it goes but what actual benefits are there to us having this that I might be able to show my clients why we've done this you know it's all about now the you know it Instead of it being about how the throughput is, it's about we're going to make sure we get your SLAs and meet your SLAs on time. So it's a slightly different way of framing it, I guess, to your point, Cara. Mm. You talk more about why is this important to the client, not the technology itself. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's a bit of work that I think needs to be done around the, the industry around that, about making sure that your clients understand that you didn't just spend X amount of pounds on something, but it benefits them. doesn't matter about that price tag, I guess, in some ways. Yeah. I agree. I, think, I guess one, sort of one of the last few points I've got, I mean, one of the things I've loved working with you guys, and you've always welcomed me in, thank you, um, but you, you are really big on um, collaboration and you uh, really take the time to work with your key suppliers um, to help them navigate your quite complex business, for one, um, to try and make sure the doors are open for them to come in, to get the most value out of what those suppliers can do. But to get their sort of advice, expertise, their innovations from them. And you always welcome regular sessions with those people to listen to what's happening. Why do, why, why do you think that you, you are you, you become good at that, I guess? You know, what, what is it that took that step? I think because we we have quite a complex process and there are a number of suppliers who are supporting us. Um, and it, it's impossible just to look at one aspect. I was walking around um, our Leeds facility and having a look at one of our lines and it has a number of different suppliers who've helped us to come up with a solution. So that's even an example where it's not just been working with one supplier, but working with a number of suppliers to come up with something which is bespoke for a particular process, which will you know, help us to be more efficient and effective, take out processes. You know, I always think about taking out processes because I'm trying to reduce the number of handoffs and therefore the number of opportunities for a defect. And you know, that that takes um, a very mature approach, I think, on behalf of all of the suppliers as well, so that that we can come together and collaborate. I think you know your products <laughs> better than we do. So I've always, particularly with you, Sam, you'll know I've come to you with, with problems because I think that other people will have better suggestions than we, we have got you know we we can um we have suggestions that we'll share with you but i think that collaboration helps to bring lots of different expertise and you end up with a much better result and i know in a number of cases of such it's, it's not about having a more efficient machine now because with the smaller runs you can't possibly exploit all of the technology that, that we've got with some of the equipment it's some of the periphery things that happen around that that we need your support with as well. Oh, it's a really good point, actually. I mean, that's probably 
one of the reasons why I guess my role has been brought in as well a little bit here yeah. is because it's important that customers are able to tell us their problems and not just say, I want to buy something tomorrow. You know, you need to talk us through what your problem statements are and then we want to help you fix them. But in return, if you get that sort of collaboration, if you like, you're actually helping each other. You yeah. Know, the yeah. Like it's difficult. It is. <laughs> yeah. I think if you're not careful, if you don't share your problems with your suppliers, they could just sell you the latest piece of technology that they've got because that's what they're selling at the moment. I'll um, tell you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new one. Of course you need a new one. <laughs> you need a new one. You need a faster one. <laughs> no, I don't. That's I put, because that's not going to solve the problem that I've got yeah, with yeah. the short run. Uh, so, yeah, I think it, it's. I think it's harder for people to to sell into a business if they don't truly understand you know what the problems are that that we're trying to solve as well so yeah we like to bring you guys in i think you're looking for solutions aren't you yeah. it's not it's yeah. not product anymore it's very much shifting to a solution sell not a not a product sell and that's difficult to embrace but you guys really look for that in your suppliers i think uh, and I'm a very you don't keep the doors closed and try and work it out yourselves and say i want this product you say here's my problem suppliers go away and have a think about it and come back with a solution you might have yeah and then you know the the partner has to work in that way as well nothing frustrates us more than a, a sales-led conversation when it's it's not appropriate and when everything when every conversation that you have comes back with the price tag um you know that that's not an effective way of working but you know roles such as yours and you know i i think we would we would very very confidently say that the model that we built with you six seven years ago um really was the the kind of tried and tested way that we want to work now and do work now and it was because of the success of actually that level of collaboration for both parties that we know it works and then we've just brought more and more of our sort of tier one partners um yeah. on the same on the same conversation we're really honest with them and and if we do find ourselves in a situation where everything becomes too sales led um you know we're, we're quite challenging um, <laughs> in, in that scenario but as you say the the two come naturally together because if we're if we're finding that we've got dual problems and can find dual solutions then then both parties grow together yeah. um, but the, the supplier and the partner has to be as mature in that model um or it doesn't work I think it's, yeah it does work both ways because I think it's all about the post-sale client care so once you once you have bought something it's about the ongoing support you get from that the constant check did it deliver what it wants are you happy with it does it still meet your needs have you thought about this have you, has anything changed in your business but it requires you to leave your doors open and let us in to come and have those conversations as much as a supplier to make sure that they still spend time with you after they've after they have sold you something and that's becoming really important as as much as prices you know in a proposition in a bid yeah. now it's the after sale care uh, I, but you, I you guys have embraced that. that yeah I yeah. do look at the the total cost so it, it's not just the new asset that you might be purchasing it is having a look at what's the level of service what are the opportunities for for gain share kind of collaboration for continuous improvement with our suppliers as well um consumables you know how can we just generally improve and make make sure that that asset is very very reliable um for the long term and i think you know when i have a look at some of the assets and the longevity of those assets in the business that's been because we've done more than just run the machines you know we've collaborated on things like um training with our staff so our staff would be be trained by the supplier to a really high standard so they're making sure that you know all those really small things that make a big difference are happening on a hourly shiftly kind of basis I can't believe you've not mentioned your awards. You don't usually get through a conversation about assets. About and this is back in the day when we both ran factories. This this was a very sore point for me. Now, now I look after all of, of the factories. I've got all of the awards. So we've got we've a partnership of the year award, I think, Christina, at some point. Oh, <laughs> that big trophy we held up. We love an award. Well, no, I mean, I really hope we get to do some more of them. Um, so do I. Um, well, okay. Well, the last point I think then it's so obviously champions of print really 
is about it's about helping the print industry in general it's not it's not here to to promote anybody in particular it's, it's to try and raise awareness in the print industry to keep it alive give others ideas of of what's happening and you know ideas for thinking about some, doing something different um what is it that you think that you guys do differently now with the print industry you know i think you open the doors now it's not whilst you still a competition absolutely we all have but um you, you you kind of don't block that so much anymore it's about helping everybody do you believe in that yeah i think we've got friendly competition yes shall I put it that way you know we're, we're truly competing um but you know certainly through covid where we saw some very large mailings in the industry now industry-wide um we would help out one of our, you know, friendly competitors to enable them to be able to deliver because we, we just want print to be successful. It was the best medium to be able to get that message out. And the best way that they could do that was through some collaboration, um, you know, with with friendly um, people like like ourselves. And I think that, you know, ultimately, you know, I'm touching wood here. We, we do a huge amount of work to all of us, um, our competitors included, to ensure the reliability um, of our services to our clients. But it is helpful, you know, that we're supporting one another in the event that something does go wrong, that we've got that network of people that we could reach out to to ensure that, you know, continuous service to, to our clients. Excellent. Excellent. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you both. It's like sitting down as we always do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. It is, it's been lovely. And as always, you've been extremely honest again and open. And I'm hoping that there's definitely people out there that will take something from this. You both are an inspiration. You oh. both lead the way in what you do and your teams. And hopefully if they listen to this, they'll see it say the same thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. It really has. So thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you. It's been fun. Yes, thank you for the invite. It's been fun. Thank you. Rico.